Hello and welcome to another video in the virtual public workshop series for the Barnesville Municipal Airport Airport Master Plan. My name is Rick Lucas. I am the project manager for the master plan and today we'll be talking about the forecast of demand. It is important to note that these forecasts were developed prior to the COVID coronavirus outbreak and a separate video will cover those impacts for the airport. We encourage you to watch other videos in this virtual workshop series and also check out the project website, which includes PowerPoint presentations, draft chapters, acronyms, contact information, and other helpful project information. So with that, let's jump into the forecast. And as a reminder, this is simply a high level overview with further technical information available in the forecast chapter on the project website. Let's start by looking at general aviation trends. A lot of what you're seeing in the industry is the transition from older, louder, less efficient aircraft to modern, more fuel efficient aircraft. Many of these aircraft are also shared with multiple owners as opposed to having individual owners as was in the past. When defining the market and service area for the airport, it's important to consider that there are other airports that are options for several different types of users. For example, for light general aviation, there are other airports on the Cape for light single engine aircraft, such as Chatham or Falmouth Air Park. However, when it comes to jet service, Hyannis is the only option and it's the only runway on the Cape that's public use in excess of 5,000 feet, which is typically required for jet service. This means that pretty much all of Cape Cod is within the jet service area for the airport. In terms of general aviation operational activity, much of the decline in the past 10 to 20 years has been a result of things like 9-11 and the Great Recession and high fuel prices. The transition to more shared use aircraft will help to fuel operational growth back into positive territory. However, we generally expect it to be relatively a slow and stable growth between one and 2% on an annual basis. With a based aircraft forecast, the shared use has its effects here in that we may actually see a slight decline in based aircraft as they are shared between multiple users, which is how you can see a decline in the number of based aircraft only by one or two. However, operations may still increase. We anticipate much of this growth would occur in the jet and multi-engine aircraft. In fact, a, a jet has recently been based at the airport in advance of what our forecast is showing. Moving on to commercial aviation, since the last master plan nearly 20 years ago, there has been a tremendous amount of consolidation in the industry with airlines like Continental, United, and US Airways all merging into other carriers. This has reduced the number of options for airlines for passengers. And in addition, we've seen the airport hubs consolidate as well, which has led to increased congestion at other airports. Of significance to Hyannis has been the reduction and removal of turboprop aircraft, which was popular in the past due to the short runway length at the airport. Much of these aircraft in various airline fleets have been removed from service entirely. Passenger employments have fallen sharply at the airport since 2008. However, they've plateaued in recent years. Much of this has been due to the decline uh, in the island markets with the introduction of the high-speed ferry service and the island air bankruptcy in 2016. Since many of these people are still using the services back and forth from the Cape and the islands, the impact has not been felt in the broader community. However, it has been noticed at the airport. On a positive note, however, outside of the COVID impacts of 2020, the JetBlue service has been stable and they are trying to introduce additional capacity into the shoulder seasons of May and September as demand permits. To help quantify the passenger market, we did some research by looking at booking data using credit card transactions to help identify who is traveling to the Cape and where people who live on the Cape are traveling to. 
we learned that despite relatively low levels of employment, there is a large passenger market, the equivalent of 215,000 annual employments, nearly 600 a day. Some of the highlights show us that the Cape originating demand is consistent year round, meaning that business is done all year long, and that it's the inbound market that spikes in the summertime, but not nearly as sharp as the drive market. It should come as no surprise that much of the people on the Cape use Boston for their air travel at about 85%, with about 10% using Providence. Some of the data also suggests that people may even use Martha's Vineyard for some of their summer travel. With the overall current market retention at about 1.3%, this is very low, and you'll see how we use that as part of shaping some forecast scenarios as to what it looks like if we start to recapture some of this larger market. This table here shows a hypothetical 1% annual increase in the market recapture, and then also a 2% increase in the annual recapturing of the market. We added these hypothetical numbers to the other traffic, which is the Cape Air and Air Taxi numbers, because the inter-island traffic was not included in the passenger booking data, and the column on the far right shows the combined totals. In addition to the baseline forecasting approach, we looked at different forecast scenarios that could be relevant to Hyannis. The first forecast scenario is a new summer seasonal carrier. This is similar to what you see at Nantucket or Martha's Vineyard. In this case, it would consist of three months of one daily regional jet, such as American or Delta, with service to LaGuardia or JFK. The second scenario is a new year-round carrier, such as twice daily regional jets, for example, United with flying CRJ 700s to Washington Dulles Airport. A third forecast scenario would consist of a new ultra low cost carrier. This is typically seen at smaller airports that have less than daily flights, such as two flights a week to places like Orlando or Fort Lauderdale on larger, higher dense aircraft. And lastly, we always look at a market interruption. In terms of a long range planning forecast, there's always gonna be some sort of event such as like a 9-11 or a recession or an airline bankruptcy or the recent example of the COVID impacts that will provide a setback, albeit temporary, but a setback to the market in the, in the broader forecast. So what happens when we look at the upper bound of the forecast, which consists of the market recapturing, we subtract out the baseline, which is the inter-island traffic, and then we get what we call the opportunity. And we compare the opportunity to the different forecast scenarios we see that those actually match up quite well, meaning that the forecast scenarios are probably an accurate representation of what a market recapturing scenario would look like for this airport. While those represent the different forecast scenarios, let's take it back to just simply the baseline forecast and comparing it to the FAA's terminal area forecast, which we use as a benchmark. There were some discrepancies in the baseline number used in the FAA's forecast, so we adjusted it to existing conditions for last year. The goal was to typically be within 10% of their forecast in five years and 15% within 10. Using the adjusted number, we are within those tolerances. So now let's take a look at the forecast summary and go over some of the key highlights that we learned. The over 100,000 passenger employments that previously flew between Hyannis and the islands are not likely to return without some sort of seismic cost shift that makes it competitive with the high-speed ferry, such as with electric aircraft or autonomous aircraft. One of the more interesting things we learned is the sheer overall size of the Cape-based passenger market. These people are currently utilizing other airports and could be using Hyannis for their air travel instead. We believe this highlights the potential for more commercial service at the airport. Our baseline forecast does include some JetBlue growth. However, we do assume it will be seasonal for the foreseeable future. This is largely due to the aircraft size and the lack of available gates and capacity at JFK. Overall, much of the employment growth will be based on attracting different types of air carriers and different types of demand than what has been offered in the past. 
again looking back at the baseline forecast in the TAF, you can see relatively conservative and moderate growth over the 20-year period. It should be noted that the operation counts and employment counts do not actually achieve levels that were seen in the past at the airport. However, as previously indicated, the growth will be in a different format, such as more fuel-efficient modern aircraft or with passenger service providing access to airport hubs and an airline network. The final element of the forecast is the identification of the critical aircraft. An airport's runway design code, or RDC, is a function of the aircraft's approach speed and wingspan, of the most demanding aircraft utilizing the airport on a regular basis, which is typically 500 or more itinerant operations per year. Both the existing JetBlue E190 and the large business jets that frequent the airport in the summertime, such as the Gulfstream 5, make up the existing RDC, which is coded as a C3, which is the equivalent of a narrow-body mainline aircraft. Some of the more demanding aircraft in the future, such as the Airbus 220 or the Airbus 320, which are popular with JetBlue and other airlines, such as Delta, also share the same design code, so we don't anticipate any changes. Thank you for watching this video on the forecast for the Barnstable Municipal Airport Master Plan. We encourage you to look at the link in the bio, which takes you to our project website, which has the helpful information, and we encourage you to email any questions or comments to the email address shown. In addition, we encourage you to watch other videos in this series to learn more about this project and the future of the airport. Thank you.